What's going on YouTube? This is Wayne with Wayne's Fish World. I'm coming at you with my 125 gallon Planet Aquarium. In this video we're going to be talking about how many fish can you actually keep in your aquarium. Guys, that varies for every aquarium. It's never going to be the same. You can set up one tank slightly different than the other and it will vary. There are so many variables. So if you really want to know and you really want me to help you, Send me a comment or a message telling me everything about your tank from what kind of filter you have on it, how much substrate do you have, uh, how many fish do you have, what kind of fish are these, how big are they, what do you feed them, what's their diet, do you have any water flow, aeration going in your tank, how long do you leave your lights on, how long and how much do you feed, what do you feed. Uh, it varies guys, there's so many variables. So we'll start off. How many fish you can keep in your aquarium is basically legs to a table. That's the way I like to think of it because it's never going to be the same for anyone. And you need to find the legs of your table and you need to balance them. First off is your filtration. Everyone knows you need good filtration for a water change. Not necessarily to get the poop out of the water. You want to do that too. But basically what it's doing, it's providing a really good place for beneficial bacteria, a rich beneficial bacteria habitat, basically a beneficial bacteria harbor, and water passes through that and it gets filtered out. Now the water gets filtered chemically, not it gets filtered mechanically too, but mostly biologically, chemically. It removes the toxins of the water and breaks them down to less toxic substance. So you definitely want to have that in check. The more biofiltration you have, obviously the more fish you can keep. Now don't get that wrong. If you don't have anaerobic bacteria, that's growing in your tank or somewhere remote, you're still going to have nitrates in the end and high nitrates can still kill your fish. So you definitely, we're moving on to the next one, the next leg of the table, you definitely want to keep your water, uh, water changes in check. Water changes might be the only thing that can remove nitrates in your case. Now in my case, I have a deep substrate bed and I have a ton of plants that are soaking nitrates out of this. And I'm sure in the video, if you keep watching, I think I saw some already, if you see bubbles popped out of nowhere, that's the nitrates in my anaerobic bacteria bed just popping up and releasing to the atmosphere. So, water changes and filtration go on. Surface area in your aquarium for beneficial bacteria. You need a lot of surface area. You need more surface area for the more fish you have. Um, yeah, your filter's going to house a lot of it, but your beneficial bacteria doesn't only grow in the filter. It grows on the rock, under the rock, on the leaves of the plants, on the driftwood, on the rocks, on the tank walls, on the heater. Everything, there's some surface area. Beneficial bacteria is growing there. So you definitely want to have enough beneficial bacteria to accommodate the size of your fish. Now, the next thing is lighting. You guys probably thinking, well, light is going to attribute to algae. Well, too much algae, I mean, too much lighting can also trigger bacteria blooms. It can wreak havoc on your tank. I see so many people coming out there and like, Wayne, I got a 10 gallon and I want to put metal halides on it and grow my plants real good. Yeah, they're going to grow your plants real good. They might even burn them up. Sometimes too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Definitely monitor your light. If you don't have a high tech planet tank or anything like that, you don't need intense LED lightings and T5s and metal halides and you know plasma lightings and power compacts and all that good stuff. If you only have a fish, fish only tanks, get some low light LEDs or maybe some, even some T8s or if you want for more energy efficient, get some T5s. Not high output, but just regular T5s. So lighting definitely attributes. I'm not gonna go into how lighting attributes because it's gonna be too long for this video, but lighting definitely attributes. Next up is feeding your fish. What's the diet of your fish? If your fish eat only meat, vegetables, which one do you think is going to put out more waste? The one who eats a whole bunch of hamburgers or the one who eats a salad all day? Obviously. So, definitely monitor your fish's diets. Make sure you feed them. I mean, if you're feeding flake food, that's not going to do much. Uneaten flake food is not going to accommodate too much. If you're feeding frozen food, frozen blood worms, something like that, and that stuff dissolves in your aquarium, it's going to dissolve a lot worse and provide a lot more nitrates in your system. So definitely watch out for that, guys. Also, what kind of fish do you have and how big are they? Two Oscars is 125 gallon with the Marine Land 350 with three inches of gravel might be suitable. I'm not going to say it's suitable, but it might be. I haven't tried it, so I can't really say. It might be suitable, but I really couldn't put many more fish in there than that. Now, if I get 500 neon tetras with you know three inches of gravel and then a three 
350, it's gonna be the same thing because these Neon Tetras don't poop much at all. Their poop is, in, it's like ant size. I mean, their poop, you barely can see it. So you gotta imagine, how much did your fish poop? How big is their poop? The smaller the fish, the more fish you can keep. The bigger the fish, the less fish you can keep. I've got about uh, six angels in here, a ballast shark, and a rainbow. They're my biggest fish. The ballast sharks are gonna be the biggest. And the angels, I think they poop the most because I feed them really good too. But they poop the most. And then I have, a, I don't even know, 12 neons, 15 serpe tetras, a couple rummy, rummy nose tetras, and you know, I don't overkill it. I got a couple rams in here, some couple plecos and cory cats and stuff like that. I don't catfish, but I've got a lot of small fish and I, I really limit my bigger fish. And I'm gonna be getting some more fish in here now that I've got some more plants. I'm making sure I balance my tank. That's the main thing. Dustin preaches this all the time and he's absolutely right. You wanna balance your tank. If you don't balance your tank, you're gonna screw it up. Um, so definitely make sure you're watching your fish. The bigger the fish, the less you can keep, unless you have some kind of super filtration unit going on. Um, how often should you feed your fish? Guys, fish in the wild don't go with food for a couple days, sometimes a week or two. I'm not telling you don't feed your fish for a week or two, but if you don't feed them every day, uh, it's not gonna kill them at all, guys. And when fish eat in the wild, they don't tell the, the prey to line up in a single file line and get in my mouth. They have to hunt it. They eat little by little. So feed your fish as little as possible, as much as possible, meaning feed them three times a day, but only a small portion of their food. Don't feed them, you know, take a whole cat full of flake food and dump it in there. Don't do that like three times a day. Feed them a little bit by little bit every day. Now saying that, I'll show you how I feed my fish. Now saying there's a lot of fish in here, you can see. And I'll end the video with this. That's what's going on guys. Next video is going to be an underwater video. Comment, rate, and subscribe. Later.